oh my goodness, all I can see on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+, on the blogs, is Noah. I want to talk about it. So the new movie in theaters right now, Noah, a Darren Aronofsky film, uh, it's all over the blogosphere. All kinds of people are calling this movie Gnostic, some people are calling it not Gnostic, some people are calling it Kabbalistic, some people are calling it Illuminati. What's the truth? So this all started with this blog post by a guy named Dr. Brian Matson claiming that the film Noah is, at its heart, a Gnostic movie. Now this is a problem for him because all of these uh, influential mainstream Catholic theologians have seen this movie before it came out, gave it their blessing, said that it was a great way to start a conversation about the Bible, about Christianity in modern times. And what Dr. Matson has a problem with is that all these people missed, supposedly, these completely Gnostic themes throughout the movie. So I went and saw the movie and I tried to determine with my best Gnostic eye whether or not this film was actually Gnostic or not. The interesting part about this whole argument is that Dr. Matson makes an argument for Gnosticism by quoting the Kabbalah. Now you'll see all of these blog posts in the description. I've got a whole roundup of them and there were a lot of them. So tuck in, you're going to do some reading. Facts, facts, facts. What are the facts? Now, it's certainly no secret that Darren Aronofsky is a big fan of the Kabbalah. His first major movie, Pi, was all about the Kabbalah and gematria and codes in the Bible. Funky movie, black and white. Go see it. It's on Netflix. Now, by the simple fact that it's a movie about the Old Testament story of Noah and the Ark means that you could really throw some Jewish mysticism in here and nobody would bat an eye. However, this particular scholar, uh, Dr. Matson, wants to make sure that everybody knows that all of this Gnostic stuff happens in the movie. Now, the Kabbalah is definitely present. You have a lot of things that come from, by Darren Aronofsky's own admission, that come from the Zohar and come from the Jewish mystical texts. And so to find ka Kabbalistic symbolism in this movie should come as a surprise to nobody. What's really confusing is that Dr. Matson keeps saying that these symbols are Gnostic and then goes on to use a quote from a Kabbalistic source to explain why they're Gnostic. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. There is some overlap between Gnosticism and the Kabbalah, but Gnosticism is a specific thing and the Kabbalah is a specific thing. And maybe they, yes, they both have their roots in Neoplatonism and in the milieu of the culture of the time. That doesn't mean that Kabbalah equals Gnosticism. And to be fair, I don't think that Dr. Maxson is actually trying to make that point. I think he understands what Gnosticism is, and I think he understands what Kabbalah is. But why he's trying to make a point by explaining one with the other, I don't understand. Now, all that being said, is this movie Gnostic? Well, maybe. It depends on how you look at it. There's some interesting stuff happening in here with the snake, and with the way that the snake skin is used as a plot device in the story. Um, I don't know of another source where something like that happens. So that's kind of interesting. You might make an argument there for a Gnostic serpent kind of savior figure in the Garden of Eden kind of story. Adam and Eve appear as luminescent without physical bodies before the fall. And so that could be kind of a Gnostic kind of a thing. The movie also goes to great lengths to point out that there are actually two kinds of people, for lack of a better term, on Earth at the time when all this takes place. There's the descendants of Cain, the people who are evil and wicked and, you know, they're just decadent and they do whatever they want. And then there's the descendants of Seth, who are essentially Noah and his family. Now, because the generation of Seth, or the seed of Seth, are pure and wise and peaceful, um, they're the ones who are ultimately going to be saved from the flood. Now, this is pretty Sethy and Gnostic, so, okay, I'll give you that one. But the really interesting part comes when they talk about these figures in the movie called the Watchers. The Watchers are essentially fallen angels who came to Earth and were trapped in the physical matter of the earth. In fact, they're encased in rock. If you're a watcher, 
Definitely a Gnostic movie. I don't want to spoil the ending for you. I actually enjoyed the movie just as a ride to go through and watch it. You know, I don't tend to overanalyze movies as they're happening. So if you like special effects, very pretty movie. There was a lot of action. There was some emotion. Russell Crowe is obviously great. So uh, if you just want to go see an interesting movie, uh, go in the matinee, pay a little less, and you'll, you'll enjoy your movie. But at the end of the day, my question is, who cares? You know, are you the type of person that takes your theology from Hollywood? Yeah, okay, so he took some liberties with a well-known story. Who hasn't done that in the last 15 years in movie making? So, you know, what are you going to do? So I give it three and a half Archons. Go see it if you feel like seeing it. Until next time.